All right, welcome to making the 600 gallon reslope aquarium part one. So finally, the 600 gallon, it goes from being a grow out tank for Predator Bay to becoming its own aquarium. It's gonna get its own identity. It's gonna be a four foot tall, six foot wide, four foot front to back reef slope aquarium. So what does that mean? Well, that means this giant pile of rock I'm sitting on and an equivalent pile in the other room that's gonna get Marco cemented together is gonna to form a giant four foot tall reef going all the way up, sloping all the way up from that four feet of front to back all the way to that four feet of height. So a very massive tall reef slope with uh, some long spires and just, you know, real, real depth to it. So it should be a very intricate uh, reef uh, and it's also meant to support big reef fish. So we're thinking big tangs, big angelfish, trigger fish, big wrasse, all the big boys. Yeah, you know, anything they won't eat invertebrates, you know, the cleanup crew, is a potential inhabitant for this aquarium. But I think before we get into the initial part of scaping the Reslope Aquarium, I think we should show the origins of this whole system because, because the 600 Reef Slope Aquarium isn't independent. It is tied into the 1500 gallon saltwater system. Let's check it out. So I think to do the system justice, we need to take a closer look at the 265 in wall behind me. So this 265 gallon aquarium sits on top of a 700 gallon refugium sump, which is also tied into the 600 gallon reef slope. And the totality of all three of these systems makes this the 1500 gallon saltwater aquarium. So as you can see, it is very well established and it's been running, this part of this system has been running for close to 10 years. So I think to be fair to the 265, since all the other aquariums have, have their build videos showing how they were built, where they came from, you know, what went into this. Let's do that for the 265 real quick, bring it up to speed to where we are now, and then let's take a look at the whole system real quick, and then we'll get into scaping the 600 reef sloop. The way to the fish basement didn't always look as nice uh, as it does now. Uh, this is a completely gutted uh, basement that I was, from, the, from day one, working on building out to be the aquarium to main fish basement. So uh, you can see that it's, it's gutted down to the, the, the block walls and the concrete floor. And uh, there's the 265 waiting for its new home uh, and a lot of lumber on the ground that was going into being the, uh, both for the 265 and the 3000 gallon, uh, which were both starting at the same time. Uh, then, you know, the next step was to build the refugian sump, you know, because the 265 is gonna be suspended on top of it. So you pretty much, have to build that and if you wonder why it's the dimensions it is is because that's the biggest I could fit in the room <laughs> because that those studs you see right there that's the hallway on the other side so now you see the 265 is in place on top of the 700 gallon refugium and you can see the the room coming together and starting to frame out the front of it uh, to make a, an in-wall aquarium and of course before you put that on there you got to have the liner you got to get all that in place and there you see some framing, you know, going on there. And the room's starting to come together too. You see some insulation and some drywall. And of course, at the same time, I couldn't resist. I started working on the 3000 gallon. Uh, that was a monster project. So as I was doing other framing, I just did that framing as well. And you can kind of see the monstrosity that is the 3000 gallon starting to come to shape. Um, but also at the same time, you see the room is coming together, starting to get finished off. And you can see the 265 is starting to become an in-wall aquarium, as well as the 3000 gallon is picking up, uh, really starting to look like something. And you see the, it's you know becoming an in-wall system as well. Um, but so there's the room that houses the 1600 gallon reef slope, the overall 1500 gallon system. Uh, you see that the wall is built underneath and it's got the panels in the top openings. And then of course I got to finish the room too. Can't be all fish tanks. So start to finish the floor. And then there's the 265 in wall lit up with the panels and then working on the panels uh, for the 3000 and there's more or less uh, the finished tank. Now that you've seen how this shell of a room has become the home of the 1500 gallon uh, marine system, let's take a quick look at the business end of the, of the system. So, you know, draining down from the 265 is into the 700 gallon refugium sump. So we have sort of the sump side over here with the protein skimmer. And then after that, we quickly just get into refugium, just live rock and macroalgae. Uh, you can see it's pretty depleted right now because 
all the massive amount of rock that used to be down in here has gone over to Predator Bay, and I've started to reseed it with some new base rock, um, or Marco rock, and we're gonna build it back up. Uh, you also might notice that it's where all the detritus goes, and that's by design. So rather than filter things out and then have to add things back in, the method I use for these aquariums is I try to make all the algae and all the detritus end up in a specific area, i.e. the refugium here, and then I populate it with invertebrates that eat algae and detritus. So uh, I did not video it, unfortunately, but when I first converted this over, it was completely covered in algae, you know, just stalactites of, you know, algae and everything, but it's all been eaten up. The sand was all covered in cyano, and now it's mostly not. You know, the invertebrates are doing their job. And the nice thing about that is we're completing the whole system, the whole nitrification, denitrification system. Rather than stripping it out and having to add things back in with chemical, chemicals, we're breaking it down within the system. We're only adding a minimal amount of chemicals in the form of, you know, Kent Marine Purple Tech or Refusion Part 1 and 2, that sort of thing, adding alkalinity and uh, calcium back to the system. But most of the other nutrients are being broken down within the system and being reused by the, the, the invertebrates and the corals and and the, and the system itself, so we don't have to worry about, you know, stripping our system of 100% of the phosphate or the nitrate, you know, or the silicate. Some of those things are needed in small amounts. So what we do here is we try to copy nature as close as possible with a little, you know, a little added technology, protein skimmer, you just can't knock that. It helps balance things out in a smaller system. Uh, even though it's 1,500 gallons, it's tiny compared to the ocean system. Uh, so at any rate, we, uh, you know, we try to balance it out the best we can. And we just make adjustments, whether that be more invertebrates or more sand sifters or more dosing or more water change, whatever it might be. Uh, we do that and we basically try to have nature do the bulk of the work and we try to limit what we need to do. Now back to the 1500 system, all that fancy plumbing there is tying in the 600 gallon reef slope into this 700 gallon reef, uh, refugium sump. So that brings us back around to the 600 gallon reef slope, which is just an empty shell right now, just waiting for a beautiful reef to be built in it. Uh, but you can see how it is tied into the over overall 1500 gallon system and how it is a ready to go aquarium. So once we get all of this uh, Marco rock and all the Marco rock that's in the other room over here, waiting to be cemented together into different pieces, we will then have the beginnings of the Reef Slope Aquarium. So, so it's time for me to cement some rock together and uh, start staging some rock above the Reef Slope. And then uh, as you can see, I got the tank top and swim trunks on. So it'll be time to aquascape the 600 gallon. You know, it's above 40 gallons, so you know the way we do it here. Ladder, swim trucks, get inside. That's what you gotta do. Total pain in the butt and you're probably thinking that's pretty crazy and you're not wrong, but uh, Hopefully, it's a one-time effort for many years of enjoyment. All right, I think I have everything to start aquascaping the 600-gallon reef slope. Uh, let's take a look. Okay, lots and lots of rock staged up on top of the aquarium. A six-foot step ladder, a towel, some swim trunks, and uh, this time we're going to use the old snorkel mask. Uh, we lessons learned from Predator Bay. It's a lot easier to see underwater with the mask, and since this. 600 gallon is even taller than Predator Bay. I think that's going to come in handy. Okay, uh, enough procrastinating. Time to get in the tank and uh, get the reef slope aquascape built. All right, the main scape is in. What do you think? It looks awesome. <laughs> all right, obviously I just got out of there and it is all stirred up. So uh, let me let this settle down and uh, get the water clear. And there's just a few more smaller detail rocks to add and a few up on top. I'm gonna have to use the grabber and reach down in there and then just place them along in there. Just the more decorative stuff. The bigger stuff is in there, but uh, yeah, I, I really couldn't, I get to the point where I couldn't see what I was doing. So gonna have to let the filter do its job and then uh, get back at this when I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so the 600 gallon restope is cleared up. It's the next day and uh, the aquascape is in place. Um, as you can see, uh, my initial idea with the platforms didn't really work out. Uh, it's kind of funny, everything looks good on paper, it looks good when you mock it out uh, dry on the floor, and then you get in the water and you get, you know, uh, all the rock in there and it just doesn't work out <clears throat> quite as expected, but uh, I did manage to get uh, the, the tall, uh, steep slope with the spires, the big opening for the larger fish to swim through. You know, there's 
slits in here where, the, where even large fish can go through and there and there and some in the front this way as well. And then of course the same thing over here. So <clears throat> that's what we were looking for is a big tall scape to take advantage of the four feet in height and uh, a nice steep slope, you know, because we're simulating the, the reef slope uh, area where you're kind of coming down, you're, you're going down from that, tr that tropical lagoon, 35 feet down, working your way down to 150 feet, and this is on the way down. So um, obviously it's ugly because it's a bunch of base Marco rock, but it is in a very well-established aquarium that's tied to a refugium and an aquarium that is just full of uh, Poorly encrusted live rock, so it should take no time at all for this to get uh, start get uh, covered with uh, correlate algae. And I will actually seed a couple of pieces, physically move a couple small pieces of uh, established rock in here just to speed that up. Uh, and this system is dosed uh, with uh, calcium and alkalinity, so it will certainly grow the uh, the coralline no problem. Uh, so what's going on now is a cleaning crew, a full cleaning crew has been ordered for the tank so because uh it's as you know it's already cycled it's already established it's on a system that's established it's ready to go for fish inverts corals plants you name it uh it looks ugly but it is actually healthy the bacteria is there um the system is established so uh the, the cleaning crew is coming right away because sometimes you do get a little bit of nutrients locked into these dry marco rock and it, if that grows any algae, uh, the cleaning crew will take that up. And then they've got plenty of leftover from uh, when this was growing out the sharks to, to munch on while I started building up the, uh, the fish uh, stock for the tank. Another thing I noticed is water flow. I have a very, very large gyre pump and it does move quite a bit of water, but it's a big tank. It's, it's deceptive uh, because it's so chunky, the four feet front to back and the four feet tall. It's just a very chunky tank. So I'm gonna get a couple more pumps and I'm probably gonna have to locate them up in the top corners of the uh, aquarium and have it blow into all that and sort of create some more laminar flow there, some stronger flow. I mean, there's current everywhere, but it's too gentle. Uh, it's definitely not strong enough for, for what I'm looking to do here. So <clears throat> because uh, it being a wood tank and you can see the, the walls of the tank are thick, you know, so I can't do a magnet. I have a cutout in the back for the uh, pump that I do have. And since I didn't think ahead and make extra cutouts, uh, that's kind of all I have. So I will go with just the standard pump on the glass. I don't think it'll look too bad up in the corner here. I don't need huge ones. Uh, they are adding to the existing flow. So, uh, you know, hopefully one in each corner, maybe even in the lower corners, I don't know. But we'll see see what the options are. If I can find something that's uh, not, too, uh, not too large, but has good water flow. I will get uh, either two or four of those and get them on here. And then uh, in the meantime, I'm starting to look uh, for fish. So the making the reef slope is probably going to be a, a two or three parter, not a, not a six parter like Predator Bay because we already had a tank. We're just repurposing it and it's on an established system. So it'll kick, it'll kick in and grow the coral and all that good stuff really, really fast. So it's just a matter now of... Uh, start to populate the rock with uh, livestock in terms of macroalgae, corals, and of course fish. All right, thanks for checking out Making the Reef Slope Aquarium Part 1. Now that the, uh, the kind of heavy lifting on this tank is done and we're just into stocking and all that good stuff, I can double my efforts on the 3,000 gallon uh, Planet Amazon Aquarium. Uh, Planet Amazon Cichlid Aquarium, big cichlids in there with live plants. Uh, so that tank has uh, got a crazy amount of work that I've been uh, doing that. It's like getting completely overhauled. And uh, it is more, it's like I said in the other video, two thirds of the way done. It's a little further now, it's, it's getting close. Um, it, it's worth the wait, a ton of work going into that. <laughs> Light, complete lighting overhaul, uh, complete water flow overhaul, uh, new fish stock, and uh, big change with the plants. Still live plants, just uh, more Amazon live plants. But uh, that's coming up soon now that I don't have to, uh, I'm not working on any other construction projects at the moment, so it's full go on the uh, 3,000 gallon. And uh, if you're interested in the reef slope, this one's gonna go quick because it's it's established. It's just a matter of finding the livestock that I want and getting them in here and getting some updates out. So uh, stay tuned.